separate. All right, let's continue. Hopefully finish Nana. Sorry, I gotta go in 45 minutes. But we'll be fine. So they got he got laid and now they leave to go to the town. This is gonna be super interesting. Does it get stick in stay in this world or will we go back to our world but now just magically have a girlfriend who knows I have nothing nothing to pack i just tossed my winter clothing into a bag and headed to the square again i was already waiting for me there with uh, a jump gym bag on her shoulders you don't seem to carry a lot of baggage it's just enough she smiled let me carry it such a man please do Although her ba bag seemed almost weightless, a bit of chivalry never hurt anyone. Well, I mean, chivalry, if you're talking about knights, like, I don't quite know what that word means. Chivalry was like, uh, being a gentleman was uh, slapping someone with your glove in your face and then stab your, each other with swords. Uh, I think that was chivalry. Clearly, never read Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I don't know about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. But I do know that most knights stabbed a lot of people, I guess. But I guess the knights and the chivalry hurt a lot of people. But, hmm. We were walking, and Lena was constantly telling jokes, anecdotes, funny stories, and never stopped laughing. Right? Now I had really lost touch with the person next to me. Indeed. Is he the one I met a week ago? <gasps> or the one that I saw for the first time this morning? Good question. When we reached the bus stop, I took up took out my mobile phone and checked the time. Surprisingly, there were still some power left. I kind of want to point out as well that <clears throat> he still has power left. He has not a single time during this since he showed up in this magical place. He fell asleep in a bus, woke up here in this strange world, like 40 years in the past. Well, 30 years in the past, perhaps. A single mention of trying to use the phone to check for um, for a signal or trying to call anyone. He was trying to use the local phone to call his parents, but he never tried to use his own mobile phone. It was almost 11 p.m. Isn't it a bit late for buses? Oh, what is that? Asked Lena curiously. Oh, just a toy. Take it. It's a gift. Thank you. He smiled and took the phone. What can you play on it? You'll work it out yourself later. It's not that hard. Anyway, a mobile phone is totally useless here. Maybe he did try it, like, outside of telling us. We waited for about half an hour, and Lena just kept talking and talking. Well, I must admit that I found her stories amusing. I felt uncomfortable with her. But what about the bus? So what about... I didn't finish the sentence as I saw a glimmer of headlights in the distance. I want to bet that he falls asleep and wakes up in the first day of the camp again. Ah, here it is, said Lena. I exclaimed Lena enthusiastically. The bus was uh, slowly carrying us away from the Sauvignon York camp, pioneer camp. I just wanted to believe that we'd never go back. The darkness beyond the window prevented us from seeing the road, the woods, or the field. Fields. Actually, it might be the case that uh, they're all long gone and we're flying through a void towards the unknown. Anyway, I couldn't care less for the surrounding. I just kept listening to Lena. 
perhaps she had said more words today than um, she had throughout her past life. You know, I interrupted her at last. I still don't understand. What exactly? She smiled. How come you could be so hesitant, so humble at first, unable to string two words together, and then... Like this. Is that important? Yes, for me it is. Well, she took a deep breath before answering. You see, I've always been the way you saw me the first time we met. I was like that in public. I wasn't able to live as I wanted since childhood, so I put on a mask. She went silent. Although, let's not get too deep into that. Then I laughed and called my arm, pressing her body tightly against me. Okay, I get it. It was probably very hard for her to discuss it indeed. Well, I mean, she's, she's like uh, very introverted, but a typical introvert, right? Typical introverts like that, dead silent in groups and, you know, hanging out, being in social situations. But then as you get to know someone, like a single person, preferably, and just the two of you uh, hang out, then you can just go on and on and on, right? That's, uh, I'm an introvert, I'm, I'm like that. Single target versus AOE socialization. Oh man, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, introverted is single target socialization and uh, extroverted is AOE socialization. It's a perfect way to describe the, the differences between those two. Yeah. Anyway, I got a lot even from such a short explanation, but still, can I be sure you won't turn into that one again? Well, in AOE situations, you will be that. You won't retreat into your shell. You won't sur surrender to your your anger and rage. That depends on you, Lena smiled slightly. It was uh, just now, now that I realized that I'm playing a high-stakes game. On the one hand, I've spent... On the one hand, I have spent a week in this obscure world just trying to find answers. Liar, he has not been trying to find answers. Oh. Oh. Try to catch the cat. I had a dog as a visitor the other day. My sister's dog, since she was going to the hospital and this dog really likes my cat and my cat really doesn't like dogs quite fun uh, an experience just trying to find answers I have uh, nothing to my name and nowhere to return to damn it on the other hand there's this girl who is obviously matters so much to me a week. He's behaving like a teenager again. I almost didn't need to think about whether I had any feelings for Lena. I just wanted to be by her side. Look at her, listen to her voice. I liked her in the way she was. I mean, he... The author authors of this story for sure must have been teenagers well early 20s perhaps it's like they aren't really fully developed yet it seems like I mean I don't mean it as a bad thing it's just in the real world this, this is a crush and like people who have had crushes know that this is how it works and that it'll pass. I mean, for sure she is the most important thing for him right now, but it's like not caring about his parents or his family or anything like that. It's 
sounds very strange. I assured myself that this is it. The real Liana is in front of me. And now, when these thoughts came back about my past life, my mysterious appearance in an 80s pioneer camp, it's just not the time for such thoughts. I feel good right now, being close to her. I don't want to return anywhere. I don't want any answers. I don't want to think about what was going, what is going to happen tomorrow. If it's up to me, then I just want to believe that you'll always be the way you are now, or this is the way I love you. Then I'll be keeping being this way as long as we are together. She hugged me even tighter. I don't know, know how long we'd been on the road, but Lena's chatter gradually, gradually started to quiet down. She put my head, uh, she put her head on my shoulders, uh, but was still telling me a story about her cat getting into this sleeping medicine. Getting dizzy and wrecking, wrecking how? All right. I slowly started to doze off myself. Still, why did you hit the Lisa? Oh my God, dude! She looked at me closely with a serious expression on her face. I always hated that bitch. <laughs> Nice. And then I laughed loudly and nestled into my shoulder. I desperately tried to not fall asleep. It's unknown what's waiting there after the bus's next turn. It might be a new life waiting for me, or it might be the end of this fairy tale, and I'll be buried in the coffin of the peeling walls and ceiling of my old apartment. But it was a losing battle. Morpheus has summoned legions of monsters under the command of fatigue, exhaustion, desolation and uncertainty. I had no choice, no chance to win the battle against these four horsemen of the apocalypse and I drifted off to sleep. next day dot 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 it was all just being oh Lena says wake up interesting consciousness slowly returned to me it's like I'm falling off a cliff so high that clouds are drifting nearby the ground is coming closer but I'm not afraid that I'll die <sighs> Ooh, sorry. My fall slows down and my body is smoothly immersed into the warm ether. I opened my eyes. You'll sleep through your whole life like that, says Anna. She looked at me seriously. Ah, what? We're there already? Where's there? She asked. I looked around. A bench, the square, Genda? But how? I was on the bus, going to the district center. Why are you looking at me as you've seen a ghost? Will we... Why am I still here? For a second I felt terrible fear. Will I never get out of this place? We were on the bus, together. On the bus? Yesterday. Yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Don't you remember? And I started thinking, yesterday? I don't remember anything like that. Maybe you just had a bad dream. Considering uh, that all that has happened already seems like a hallucination. This must be a dream within a dream, then. Well, let's take it slowly. I tried to think logically. The session ended yesterday. All the pioneers left. We stayed. And then we took a bus and headed to the district center. Then I surely looked perplexed. Why are you kidding me? I'm not kidding anyone. Today is the last day. What? Wait, 
So, how much time have I spent here? Then I started to count off her finger. Looks like seven days. Not eight, it's seven. Definitely seven. I gave an exhausted sigh and covered my face with my hands. Well, that's another riddle in the long list of this camp's mysteries. Well, okay, though I have a feeling that we won't manage to leave today either. Why? Six cents? You're acting a bit strange today. I suppose I have my reasons. Want to tell me? I gazed at her attentively. I do. Sure, why not? When I... <clears throat> Banana Waffle Monkey says, Altern Altern Alternative title, Lusty Protagonist Gaslights Himself at the Camp. Hmm, yeah. There we go. Lusty Protagonist Gaslights Himself at the Camp. You have a way with words, Banana Waffle Monkey. I really like that. That is exactly this whole story. Lusty Protagonist Gaslights Himself at the Camp. Yeah. I'd hope so. I study them, he said, laughing. Well, I mean, I've studied words as well, but I'm good at semantics, not uh, like art. Well, not at being creative with them. I mean, creativity doesn't come from study, it's like. I have a pretty good lexicon, like internal lexicon, like good structure about what stuff means, but being creative and figuring out what words to use and stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's a good trait to have, I suppose. When I had a real chance to break free from this camp, everything failed. So what do I have to lose now? Now, where do I start? Start from the beginning. Yes, of course. Well, I was born, I studied, married. Wait, what? Married? Er, uh, well, okay, I haven't gotten married yet. I'm not even sure he's gaslighting himself. He might be just gaslighting us, the reader. We still have time. Yes, but, well, in a few words. Like, I'm not from this world. From the looks, look she gave me, it was clear she didn't understand me at all. I came here accidentally, even I don't know how. So what does your world look like? Lena asked seriously. It's, well, it's virtually the same, but 20 years ahead of, of your world. Banana Waffle Monkey says, I don't think he understand himself either. Maybe not. Maybe not. Don't know yet. It's many things that are unclear. But it seems like he doesn't understand. It seems like he's a dumbass. His behavior changes depending on, like, his internal mind. He seems like a different person in different contexts. Do you already have space flight? Wait. They already had space flight in the 80s. What is she talking about? Yeah, exactly. Well, if it comes to that, you have it as well. However, we haven't made any great achievements in that field yet. Sounds interesting. I was unable to tell if Lena was taking me seriously or, or, or was just pretending to do so. I used to live in a completely different place as well, far away to the north. Judging from the landscape... Oh, alright, far from the north, far to the north, judging from the landscape, in a big city. I've never been to the big cities, says Lena. Maybe that's for the best. Well, you show me your house. Seemed like she was taking this conversation as seriously as I was. 
uh, Rerubis shows up and says, Hi, oh, flirting with girls in a Soviet camp? Nice thing to do. Can't be there. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, yeah. Flirting with girls. Well, I mean, I'm incompetent in flirting. It kind of feels like the girls are flirting with me rather than me flirting with them. Well, I'm not even sure it exists in this world, Simeon. Oh, come on. Then about it. Well, sure I will. So, how did you get here? One evening, I took a bus, bus, route 410, and I woke up here. I don't know anything more than that. The 410 rat. That's the one that stops just outside the camp. Yes, but my 410 travels in another place and time. Are you planning to return? Then I said, and I noticed a note of unhappiness in her voice. I have no idea how to. And if you knew? You're asking tough questions? Yeah, he has a blind spot for sure. Like, even though he's depressed, well, he was depressed, I don't know if I would call him depressed still, and like, having a rough time at life, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't throw your life away for this without a proper explanation, or like, exploring if... My, my hypothesis is still that he's catatonic, he's just closed himself in, he just snapped and just checked out and this is all his this is all figments of his imagination. That's my hypothesis and I stick by it. You're asking tough questions. What's wrong? Says Anna. Nothing, but you see, I only recently started to adjust to being here. I point. The first hours in this camp was such a shock for me that I, I don't know. It's okay, you still have time to think about it. Time to think. It seems that even if Lena believed me, she considered the, considers this whole situation just a typical inconvenience and nothing more. Anyway, it's not up to me. Possibly even if I do want to stay, you see, the one who brought me here can take me back as well. I believe that any event in a person's life has a reason. Oh, right. Oh, well, she's religious, is she? Should a reason and a cause. It's two very different things, I would say. Therefore, you are here for some reason. Maybe. And if you haven't returned, you must be needed here. Ugh. Well, I can't rule out that interpretation. Olga says, Hey, time to pack your stuff. The camp leader's voice sounded from afar. Hear that? I don't have much to pack, says Simeon. But I do, so I meet you near the bus. Would you like me to help? Thanks, but there's no need. Nana smiled and ran off towards the cabin. I remained sitting on the bench, trying to cope with the shock. My thoughts were still in chaos, one theory replacing another. On the one hand, me being unable to get out of this camp isn't all that odd compared to me finding myself here in the first place, but... What now? What am I supposed to do? Is there any chance that I can leave camp if I try again? Anyway, what's the point in being nervous? By now... I perfectly have, by now I know perfectly well that absolutely nothing is up to me. Maybe I just have to sit back and enjoy the ride. I guess that is a valid thing to do, I suppose. I couldn't help smiling. Banana Waffle Monkey says, Vehicles are usually either symbols of liberation or symbols of oppression. And it seems to be the latter in this case. Vehicles. Yeah, 
I remember when I took my, when I got my driver's license. Such liberation, such freedom. I just spent the whole day just driving around, going here, going there. Uh, at the same time, we have the oppression thing I don't get. Is it like you're stuck on a road and you can't leave it? Like the bus route only goes one direction and you have no control over it. Banana waffle like this usually either uh, provide mobility and opportunity to the driver, or they're crashing, or you're making payments on them, or you're not in the driver's seat. Yeah. All right. And he's for sure isn't in the driver's seat. In this case, he's mentioned uh, the bus how many times? And he hasn't caught it yet. Well, he was just on the bus. And then he got teleported back another day in the past. Yeah, and he's not in the driver's seat. That is what he's saying for sure. And now he's changing his tune. Ah, uh, Banana Waffle Monkey missed that. Yeah, he, we went on the bus with Lena. We jumped on the bus. She was talking. We were talking. We were driving for hours. Then we fell asleep. And then we woke up the day before on a bench talking with Lena on day seven. And Olga showed up, the camp leader, and told, uh, told us to pack. It's time to leave. Like, we're back to before he got laid, before they... Uh, had sex and all that, we're before that. Like when he was sleeping, like more than 24 hours ago. It's very, it's a very strange story. Especially now when I have an additional reason not to be in a hurry to leave. And that reason is Lena. And I have no idea what she knows now. If they like got together or if she's angry with him or if we're in a completely different storyline idea. Maybe she's right, and I am here for a reason. In the end, even if I can narrow down the possible explanations for my situations, situation to a reasonable minimum, there would, uh, would still be a thousand and one different possibilities. And if I keep exhausting myself, analyzing them, I'll just go mad. Maybe it's time to make a choice. Maybe this world isn't so bad after all. Especially since for the first time in a long time, I have something to live for. Ugh. Moral of the story. If you're depressed, get a girlfriend. It's still vague. It's still a vague something, but I still have it. It exists. And now I have the power not to simply hold it, but to develop it to something bigger. With such thoughts, I stood up and started walking to Olga's cabin in order to pack my humble belongings and leave the Sobnok Pioneer Camp forever. Actually, now to go back to your your point, actually, even though you missed that part, uh, makes I like your your oppressive vehicle analogy because the 410 bus is his god, like it. It decides where he should go and what he should do, and he has no control over it. With such thoughts, I stood up and started walking to Olga's cabin in order to pack my humble belongings and leave the Sobnyuk Pioneer Camp forever. Perhaps. One may think it's strange, and that's exactly how it seemed to me, but eventually we reached the district center. Oh, I eventually got tired in the bus and fell asleep. When I woke up, I ran up and down the aisle of the bus, gasping for air, but I soon realized that this long week is over. At last, I managed to break free from the camp. All the time I spent there seemed like so much longer than seven days, and now everything is over. 
Soon after that, the events moved with frightening speed. No time left for self-analysis or seeking answers. Moreover, from time to time I completely forgot about the camp. Like anyone, I found himself in a completely strange environment. I, I was completely lost. I had no papers, not even a simple birth certificate. No skills to earn a living. Professions such as computer specialists or call center operators were not in demand. So he spent his life here. Then I returned to her normal life. She had to graduate from school and get ready to enter university. The Pioneer Camp was in the south of the USSR. Just as, I as, as, just as I had assumed, Lena lived in a town with a population of about 100,000 people. It was easy to get there by bus from the district center. There was nothing special about the town. One big factory, rows of five-story houses, wooden huts on the outskirts, a grocery store that closed at 7 p.m. and a supermarket. A tree eaten for a shopaholic with choices including rubber winter shoes, women, sheepskin coats, and men's musquash hats. Before I would already before I would already be trying to run away from a place like this, but now it was my home. Cases of starvation starvation was rare in the twentieth century Europe. I managed to find a job was employed as a turner's assistant in a factory and was also given a room in a hostel. Over time, this initially difficult and strange job started to bring certain satisfaction, partially of course. That came from having the ability to buy food. Time passed and I climbed up the career ladder, becoming the head of a whole ship. My colleagues were amazed at my talents and persistence, and so was I. Then I graduated from school and I spent several nights with the cal calculator designing diagrams of expensive and income, and at last made up my mind to propose to Lena. I don't remember now if it took a long time for, for her to think, if she suggested that we sign a marriage contract, or if she, uh, she protested because of the lack of a dire Dowry. Dowry in the 80s? 90s? But in a short time, both of us moved into a communal apartment room near the factory that cost two thirds of my salary. Thanks to free Soviet education for everyone, or maybe thanks to my wife's persistence, eventually I became a part time student at the local Polytechnic University. At first, I protested, saying that a fair proletarian had no need to act uh, like the lousy intellectuals. But then I came to the conclusion that a diploma would make my life easier. It wasn't difficult to study thanks to my knowledge from my last attempt at receiving a higher education. Time passed and the country started to change. <sighs> Banana Waffle Monkey says, Scholars and oppressive governments don't mix well. Yeah, that's... Historically, that have been the case, as far as I know. I mean, we could, in theory, uh, Imagine a world, an oppressive government that is super focused on uh, like intellectualism and scholarly, like let's go super secular and like it's all about education all the time and being super oppressive. Like, uh, again, you remember the picture of let's climb that tree, like having a, an oppressive government like that focusing purely on intellectual pursuits. I wonder, I actually, I'm actually curious now, that's, that's a book to write for someone. Would that, would that become oppressive with the scholars like, would that work? Would that be a 
possibility or as you say would they not mix well would the uh, focus on intellectual pursuits necessarily bring down or change the oppressive government to something more acceptance I suppose I mean if we do study psychology I guess a psychology scholar would I want to believe that people are nice people and I think most people like the majority of people would go for the route like oh let's increase happiness and then like in psychology we learn that well oppressiveness doesn't really increase happiness interesting thought experiment I suppose uh, it wasn't difficult to study thanks to my uh, knowledge from my last attempt at receiving higher ed education. Time passed and the country started to change. Of course, I knew that it would happen, but still the changes came out of the blue. You could compare it to being caught in an avalanche in the mountains. You can prepare all you like, but it, but it will still bury you anyways. The factory was privatized and then closed down. Moonlighting as a private driver in the Kopieka, it's a Russian car, very cheap and old. Rattle trap I inherited from my father-in-law was not really a profitable business. I was even ready to apply for a camp leader's position in Sovignok when Lena, Lena's distant relative died and left us a one-room apartment somewhere in central Russia. After a family council, we decided to move. We greeted the early 1990s, 90s in a cramped kitchen in a Krivishkoya, sorry. It's a low-cost, concrete, paneled, three- to five-story building developed in USSR during the reign of Nikita Khrushchev. Watching Swan Lake. Uh, thanks to random side jobs, I saved up some money and we decided to move to a bigger city. And of course, I chose my birthplace. Is he gonna become his own father? We decided to sell the flat and use the money to invest in business. For some time, we lived in luxury, buying mink fur coats and expensive foreign cars, dining in restaurants and taking trips to other countries. Like many others during that time, I had the luck to somehow make it big, starting from the bottom. My business was construction material retail. It was profitable. It was a profitable market, and at the time, because people made excessive money, that they wanted to invest in luxurious homes. Maybe such a life could have gone on, but the nineties were called rackish for a reason. After encountering rackets and corruption, I was left with an empty refuge refrigerator, an empty wallet, and a bitter taste of blood in my mouth. That was the time I tried to call my man from the, f man from the future status. Betting places, betting places that were impossible in the Soviet area popped up all over, and I rushed to gamble on everything I knew. Betting places. All right, all right. However, I faced new disappointments as matches were won by completely different teams. Even the 94 World Cup champion wasn't Brazil. When I was just watching football on TV, everything went as it should. But when, whenever I spent the last of my money to make a bet, even the underdogs began, began phenomenally beating favorites. As well as that, I tried to pursue the career of, of a political advisor. Right? However, you don't get accepted into high positions like that without special connections or anything that would make people interested. Right? I don't know how long I would have gone through this torment if not for an event which changed everything. Me and Lena had a child. In a hurry, I started to search for any possible way to earn enough to provide for my family. I remembered some of my father's old friends, and through them, 
by pretending to be a distant relative of myself, I gained a place as a junior data analyst in a bank. At the time, I made new attempts to obtain my degree, or to be precise, finish it. Time passed slowly, the money was just enough to fill our stomachs. I almost lived at work for days, trying to find some time for my exams. Then I stayed at home with the baby. That was when I started writing. I remember it that was as it was yesterday. It was just after midnight and I was sitting in the kitchen in front of my old worn out I-386, wildly killing monsters in Doom 2. I wanted to sleep badly, but computer games at least slightly distracted me from the infinity of dull days. When I completed another level, I was suddenly immersed in thoughts about everything I'd gone through during the last few years. It was all too much for one person. That's when I decided to write down everything that had happened to me. I launched the word processor, processor and wrote down about 200 words with a clear intent of continuing tomorrow. However, I didn't remember it tomorrow, nor even a week later. 200 words? 200 words is nothing. About a month later, Lena, who was typing something about on the computer, reminded me of my unfinished book. He hasn't even started the book yet. 200 words? Like, this is 200 words, I am pretty sure. I reread it and deleted it, terrified. At that moment, I started to doubt if I could ever do it. After all, it was an entire epic novel, and I wasn't even able to string two sentences together. In addition, it's not easy to write about yourself. Creative, creative work put on the back burner for now. I celebrated the arrival of the year 2000 as a certified specialist with the department head duties. Dev projecting watch, says Banana Waffle Monkey. I don't understand what you mean. While moving uh, to another apartment, I found my old i386 among the trash, and it was to be thrown away, and I remembered my intention of writing a book about my life. Projecting, not projecting. Ah, there we go. That's why I, why I misunderstood. I was thinking like he was doing a project. No, he's projecting the developer, the writers of this. Yeah, he's been uh, writing about how, how he's such a great writer. He has been the, the author, has been pointing in from time to time, projecting into the story. And on that offensive as well. But probably, yeah, there is some projecting in here. I laughed. How stupid, however, after some time I opened up my laptop and made a sort of draft of a short story about a young man with no definite occupation or aspiration who found himself on a different planet. The style or the style of orthography and punctuation as well as the idea itself were matched as well as such a silly plot oh yeah he's not even projecting he's writing himself into the story it was him all along and this was my life that i had on i showed the story to my wife she laughed but said it was well written here he is again self-insertion yeah exactly Ooh. That's a really good name for it. It's like he's fucking himself. Self-insertion. Again, well-written. It is well-written. He loves saying that the story is well-written. And advised me to continue. About a year later, the drawer uh, designate, designated for holding my litter. The draw, ah, draw. I thought it was a person drawing, painting, you know. Now the drawer designated for holding my literary works was full. I found that very odd because I was spending entire days at work, sometimes even during the holidays. And I tried to spend all my available free time with my family. However, that's what happened. 
Around that time, I decided to publish my short stories. As with any other beginner's work, uh, most of mine were rejected. But a couple of them were accepted, accepted, including my first work. I was over the moon, of course, I was paid nothing, but my works will be read, meaning that someone will find them interesting. Time passed, we had a second baby now. <sighs> During my spare time, I slowly wrote a novel. No, not about my life or the pioneer camp. I decided not to touch, the, touch upon those themes ever again. Everything that happened years ago seemed to be the will of God, whose charity should not be tempted. Who can tell what would have happened if I hadn't woken up in a bus, bus near the Sauvignon camp gates? A year later, the novel was completed. After I had annoyed almost all known publishers, I managed to reach an agreement with a small company. The editor, an elderly man wearing a ragged tweed jacket and thick spectacles, which almost rubbed against his magnificent grey moustache, told me, Your level is average, young man. Average, yes. But the idea itself is interesting. Interesting, yes. <laughs> Well, you need more practice and uh, more reading, yes. More reading? Hmm. I remember these words for the rest of my life. I dispensed the copies that were sent to me uh, as part of my royalty agreement. Among my friends and colleagues, all right, right, right. Lena, who read my novel only after it was published, told me that she really liked it. Yeah. And I kind of a uh, created for him, eh? Mostly out of a desire to not upset me, I guess. Time passed. The calendar days were unstoppably approaching that day when I was pulled out of my usual world and thrown into this life. Start oh, right, right, right. Starting from uh, the mysterious pioneer camp and now ending up here. Now I am a successful writer, at least according to the number of copies I. My books have sold. I have a wonderful wife and two children. My life has turned 180. Midnight tonight is the start of something new. Tomorrow is the day I was waiting for for so many years. What are you thinking about, says Lena? I opened my eyes and saw Lena. Oh, he has eyes now. He hasn't had eyes in this entire story. She put a cup of tea on the table near an armchair. Firewood was gently crackling in the fireplace and a snowstorm was roaring outside. I wrapped myself up in a plate blanket and looked at Lena. Do you know what day it is? No, what day? Do you remember when I, what I told you back there in the camp? No. No wonder during all these years I never brought it up the topic of my mysterious arrival in this world. Do you remember how I told you I'm not from this world? Then I paused. Well, something like that. Yes. Today is the day when many years ago I got on the 410 bus and woke up at the Pioneer bus. So it's an anniversary. Then I smiled. Yes, sort of. Is it a sad celebration for you? No, no, not at all. And I remembered almost nothing about that time. Maybe that's for the best. I added some firewood to the fire and took the mug from the table. Maybe I'll write a novel. You will read it and remember. Do you think that's a good idea? Lena's expression became serious. Indeed, I once promised myself I would never write about it. Maybe it's not. After all, everything here that happened is just for us. That's exactly what I think. I sighed and looked at the fire. You know, life is like a candle. Someone got a short one, someone's got a long one, and I can burn it, it and it can burn out at any moment. Nice. Then our life is like this fireplace. Yeah, perhaps. I looked at her and smiled. I'll sleep for a while longer. Anna kissed me and fixed her gaze on the fire in a dreamy manner. My eyes closed and my whole reality compressed itself down to the crackling of the firewood. firewood. I started falling slowly, somewhere far away. No, it was not a dream, more like a, more like warm ether. 
simply enveloping my entire existence. And are we time traveling again? Living the dream, achievement unlocked. Every story has its beginning and its end. Lena, good end achievement. Every story has its own outline. Synopsis. Oh, we have seen this. And we're done. So, the moral of the story is if you're depressed, find a girlfriend. Of this story, anyway. Ugh. Did not like that ending either. So I've seen three endings now. The two endings where he gets... Well, the one ending where he dies. Just randomly. He just goes to sleep and doesn't wake up in the end of the camp thing. With all the other copies of him. And I've seen the ending where he just wakes up and goes on with his life. And then there are some random weird shit. He's getting weird messages from the computer. Someone talking about this. What happened here? As uh, it was uh, a party and they were doing some drugs and some weird shit happened. And then we have this end. Where he just continues his life with Lena. Kind of need to see the Lena bad ending. Not today, though. We'll see that tomorrow. I'm pretty sure it'll be super... Uh, super fast. Um, oh, I can't say. Right. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we'll, uh, it'll be super fast tomorrow. And then perhaps we'll go look for another ending. See if the other Lena ending is any good. But now I'm 10 minutes late for what I needed to do. So thanks for hanging out and see you next time.